Being able to go independently into the mountains without the guidance of others often requires a lot of skills and also good gear. And without a doubt, one of the most important skills is feeding yourself when you're actually out in the mountains. And to do that, you need reliable gear that you can trust and hopefully it's lightweight. So in this video, I wanna show you exactly what gear I use when I choose to use it and why I use it, I'm gonna go through the exact kitchen kit that I use to prepare food when I'm out in the mountains and hopefully you'll learn something. Let's get into it. Firstly, I just wanna say that none of this gear is sponsored. If you look closely at the things I'm showing you, this gear is old as fuck. <laughs> I've been using this gear for years, some of it up to you know five, six, seven years. And if you know the channel, you know that I do endurance reviews and I don't necessarily want to encourage you to buy more things. I want you to buy things that last. I want you to reduce your consumption so we don't end up with you know junk and plastic all over this planet. So let's get into the first piece of gear. It's my favorite, it is amazing, the jet boil. Now, you've probably seen me using this in a bunch of other videos. I take this on almost every trip that I go on, primarily because I'm lazy and I don't actually do that much cooking. <laughs> when I do cook, I cook on another stove, which I'm gonna go through soon, but primarily I use the jet boil for boiling water, preparing dehydrated meals and making teas and coffee and that sort of thing. And what is incredible is the amount of technology that's in this thing. You'll notice when you fire up the jet boil, you'll have the flame coming out of this section and actual pot on top. If you put your hand here, you won't feel any heat. This thing is crazy, crazy efficient. And I like efficiency. So without wasting too much heat, without wasting a lot of gas, you are getting the quickest boil you can possibly get out on the market. This particular model is the Flash. I find the zip to be a little bit too small. Sometimes I wanna make a coffee and make my dehydrated meals at the same time. So the Flash is the perfect size for me. So just for future reference, the Flash, the one that I'm using is one liter. The Zip I think is 800 mils and the Sumos come in a bunch of different sizes, but they are huge. In terms of the weight, this thing is 13.1 ounces or 371 grams. It all packs down fairly small. Hands down, the best thing about this product is that it has a very, very fast boil time of about 100 seconds. Sometimes it can be longer, sometimes it can be shorter based on your altitude, that will tend to change. So they're the pros, let's talk about the cons. Well, there's not too many. I mean, sometimes the piezo misfires. The piezo is essentially the, the igniter, the lighter here. Um, but if you're having problems with that, you can just jam a knife under it, see that? And move it around a little bit until you find the perfect spot for the piezo. It can be a little, um, what's the word? God, come on. Two hours later. Can be a little inconsistent if you move it around you should be able to get the firing. Best thing to do is just take a lighter with you just in case or a flint or matches, whatever. The only other thing negative I could say about jet boil is they do have some kind of ridiculous rules. Like technically you're only supposed to fill it up two cups, which is here, which is nothing. I mean, you're always gonna fill it up more than that. And uh, one other thing, which I'll get to later. Now I've linked everything with the full details and my comments on my kit. You can check out in the link below you can understand in deeper detail why I chose this stuff uh, to use it and to recommend it to you. So that's my main boiling heating unit that I'm taking with me on most of my trips. However, if there is more people coming or I'm planning on doing some cooking, if I've actually prepared something, then I'll be using the Cedar Summit 2.8 liter X-Pot to do my cooking. So let's jump in and check that one out. This is so good for cooking one pot wonders in, in the mountains, throw everything in, boil it up, add some spices. You're gonna have a beautiful little meal cooking in one of these bad boys and it's 2.8 liters and there's plenty of space. Probably the best thing about this though is that it packs down completely flat. Mm. Something very satisfying about that. I don't know what it is. <laughs> okay. Well, this silicon puts up with a lot. You can see that I've kind of got a little bit uh, excited here and the flames have started to lip up around the silicon and whilst I wouldn't recommend you do that, this silicon seems to be like pretty well fireproof and it puts up with a lot of heat. You might be wondering like, is this a really a good idea to be cooking on silicon? You know, obviously it's got aluminum or something at the bottom, so you're not cooking directly on silicon, but the fact that it's made with the walls like that is something that's really, really ingenious and something that's completely new on the market. Well, this has been out for a few years, but it's completely different to everything else. When you bust out the lid, there's a couple of 
great things about this. It's got a built-in strainer, and it's also got these nice little handles on the side that when you fold them over, can lock the lid in place. So if someone stumbles and kicks the pot over halfway through cooking, you're not gonna lose all your lunch. So that's the good things when it comes to the cons. Well, there's not much. Um, I will say that this is the second lid that I've had for this pot. The first model, the earlier models, I had a really um, flimsy, sort of sketchy lid. It wasn't very good. That one actually broke really quickly when I was packing it down into my pack, I think. Um, but I emailed Cedar Summit and they sent me a much more durable lid. So you got to love a company that actually looks after its customers and does stuff like that. So thanks guys. The only other thing negative about it is that it is pretty sizey. I mean, it's a big pot and it's probably overkill. Most of the time I don't use the full 2.8 liters because I'm only with one or two other people, but I'm really clutching at straws there to come up with something negative about the X-Pot. It is a great little product. As well as the X-Pot, there's also the X-Plate, the X-Cup, the X-Bowl. I also have the X-Cup here somewhere, but they are all great little products because they fold down, they're super light, durable, all the same things apply to the plates and cutlery sets. All right, onto my third piece of kitchen kit. You might be wondering what I'm putting under that X-Pot in terms of a fuel source. You don't want to put the jet boil straight under there. That's not what it's designed for. So I have a completely different stove and that is the Covia Superlight. So let's have a look at this bad boy. So this is the Covia Superlight Titanium. This is the one that I use when I'm actually doing cooking, not just when I'm preparing dehydrated meals. That's what I use my jet boil for. When I'm actually cooking something in a pot, like a soup or a pasta or throwing on a fry pan, anything like that, I'll be using this Covia. As you can see, it is incredibly tiny and very lightweight, which are probably the two best things about this stove. This is a surprisingly stable with a really large pot. The first time I used this with a big pot, I was kind of nervous about putting, you know, a pot this size on top of a tiny stove, but because these arms fold out and you are putting that on top of the gas bottle, it's actually pretty stable and I've, I don't think I've ever had a problem with it falling over. Total weight of the stove is 2.1 ounces or 59 and a half grams. It does have a built-in piezo, which works really well. I haven't had any problems with the piezo, so that's always good. Comms when it comes to this stove. Uh, I was, hope mm. I was hoping to have this fixed in time. I sent an email to Covia, but they haven't got back to me yet. Uh, the kingpin screw is missing. So this little guy, that becomes a little bit of a problem. I've tried to replace it just with like a regular screw. However, it is a reverse uh, thread screw and they're very, very hard to find. It is a very particular type of screw. So yeah that kind of sucks having said that i have had this problem for about six months and i've just continued to use the stove as it is and it still works perfectly fine it's a little more difficult to balance obviously but it's not ideal so yeah that's a little bit of a con but i'm sure Covia will eventually get back to me and replace that screw so no big dramas there other things that aren't so good about this stove is that it's so tiny it's sometimes hard to find in my backpack <laughs> spend ages looking for it but apart from that this is a pretty incredible stove. Obviously, it doesn't boil water as fast as the jet boil. Next on the list is the Light My Fire lunch kit. I have had this for a couple of years. This little kit keeps my food fresh. It saves me using too much plastic. It's very versatile. I can use it as a cup or a plate or a bowl. There's a chopping board involved in there as well. So it comes with a chopping board, but I'm useless and I lost it. This comes out of a company called Light My Fire. They are Swedish, so you know it's good. I think it's even made in Sweden. So if you're a fan of Swedish made, Swedish made stuff, then <laughs> <laughs> I won't always take the entire kit. Sometimes I'll just pick and choose what I need, uh, but that's my cup. This is another smaller little container. They all, they kind of come in lots of different shapes and sizes. I've bought this a couple of times because I'm terrible and I just tend to lose things. So I tend to go back to light my fire and just get a new set because they are such good quality. Oh, they are made in Sweden, check that out. They don't leak, the lids stay on. It prevents me from spilling stuff all over myself, which I quite often do. It's pretty much everything you would want in a container and a complete kitchen set for pretty cheap. Cons when it comes to these containers, literally nothing. Next piece of kit, 
is this is actually just an accessory for the jet bowl, but it's something I cannot live without. It's the Java kit. So this enables you to turn your jet bowl into a press coffee filter. So I use press coffee at home. It's my preferred type of coffee. So that means when I'm out in the mountains, I get to have the exact same coffee experience that I do when I'm at home. And it costs me no more weight and nothing else. So all you do is Screw it on, lid goes on, let it sit for a few minutes, and you got some coffee, beautiful coffee. Next piece of gear on the list is from Human Gear. This is the GoTub, they also make GoTubes. They are great for bringing anything with you to the mountains that is liquid or sticky or traditionally very hard things to take. I like to take olive oil, I take peanut butter, Vegemite, yeah, uh, all kinds of spreads, basically anything that would need a glass container generally. These weigh absolutely nothing. They're 0.7 ounces or 20 grams each. And probably the best thing about them is how they open, which once you do it though. Mm. Again, this saves you loads of plastic and accumulating just junk to take with you when you're on the trail. Instead of taking individual single serve sachets or containers of this stuff, you can put it in these containers. Reusable things that you can just clean, eliminating single-use plastic, saving the environment, saving you money. It's a no-brainer. Now, there's a few other things that I didn't have time to squeeze into this review. So if you jump in the first link in the description, that will take you over to my mountain kit page where there is also the go tubes the hydration bladder that i use over there my water bottle and i'm continually adding to this list all the time so if you want to stay up to date with new things that i'm testing and using in the mountains check out that link for all the details just a side note if you buy something i will get a commission thank you very much so there's not much point having all the gear and having no idea how to use it so in this next video i'm going through the typical foods that i put together for a three to four day back backpacking or climbing trip in the mountains. I like to minimize the amount of preparation. I like to keep it very simple, nutritious, healthy food that doesn't take ages to prepare. So if you're into that, check out this next video. I'll link it right here. I'll see you on summit. Yeah, mate, want some crack? Yeah, sure. Mm, give me that crack. That's mountain crack.